I would love to learn a little bit more about what brought you into the world of pastry. So what brought me into the world of pastry, um, I worked at a, well, I worked at a, well, I was, I worked in the kitchens previously. So I worked in several high-end um, uh, French restaurants. I also worked at a really high-end uh, soul restaurants. And after doing that for a couple of years, um, I kind of got burnt out. Mm. And so I switched gears and basically doing, um, I worked as an administrative assistant at a law firm. And um, in the process of doing that, I got, I, I got, um, one day I was at work one day and they were like, oh, you should bring in a dessert. So I was like, okay, I'll bring in the dessert. And um, the dessert I brought in was cheesecake. And everyone loved it so much. They were like, oh, you should sell these. And I was like, well, I wasn't really planning on selling them. And uh, people were like, no, they're so good. And so one of my good paralegal friends who we are still friends today, um, was like, hey, if you, if, if, if you want to do it or if you need help, you know, he was like, I'll help you with it. So I was like, okay, cool. I was like, if we're going to do this, I said, I have to make it my own. I said, I can't just do this. I'm not going to just be just a run of the meal kind of cheesecake person. I said, I want to do really innovative flavors and out of the box, something that's not just so sugar coated and candy flavor. And so we were running through ideas um and then he was like you know you should start making them smaller and i was like oh that's a good idea and so fast forward um i said i'm going to make this my own i had to think of flavors and that was my my signature flavor that i came up with it's called beet and berry it's one of our top sellers actually till today um uh, and so people really really enjoy it along with our other seasonal flavors that we have um along with our other seasonal flavors that we make throughout the year as well. Um, so in, you know, in the summer, we have a roasted corn and blackberry. We have a, um, a, a grapefruit and uh, uh, tarragon. We have a roasted pineapple and sage. So, and then we have our holiday flavors. We have pumpkin. We also have a maple pecan. So we have a plethora of, of flavors that we do. And we, you know, we're always introducing and making new flavors. So, yeah, yeah those yeah. sound super delicious, especially that they are. berry is my jam. Yeah. Um, so do you need to get set up a bit? Or? Nope, I'm already set up. We are my, 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 uh, my baker, she prepped everything already for me and we put everything in the balls <laughs> and I am ready to work. <laughs> awesome. Oh, no, we, we are, we already knew that this was, we, we already prepared for the worst. So we was like, you know what, let's just pre pre plan everything. So that way, everything is good to go. Wonderful. So right now, I actually have my, are you able to see my mixing bowl? I am. Yes. Okay. So let me see if I can. Okay, there we go. Oh, tripod. Very professional. Hey. So here, is, uh, so I can just talk and walk through it. Yeah, let's uh, hold on. Let's pause for a sec. We're we're making eggnog okay. cookies, right? Yes. So we are making eggnog cookies today. Um, these cookies are actually they are inspired from a Russian tea cookie, actually, Ooh, which yeah. are called Mexican wedding cookies. They are sort of like the same. They are the same formula of a, of the red of the Mexican wedding cookies, if you've ever um, made them before. Mm -hmm. um, so they kind of are put together the same formula. There's actually, and they actually can be made, they're actually dairy, they actually can be made dairy-free and gluten-free. Impressive. So, so that, that, you know, well, gluten-free mostly, but dairy-free, you can, there's no egg in it, I guess you say. There's no egg, but there is dairy because there's butter. <laughs> so they can't be vegan although there is some no. good vegan butter out there there is and you can substitute that for um my favorite is um you can use earth balance or you can use um 
uh, what's the other one called? Um, Way to Your Heart. Okay. That's a good one, yeah. Um, just to briefly interject, um, some folks are wondering what our schedule is now. And I think we're just gonna go as long as we need to. Let's we'll just, do let's the just, demo, let's just, we'll get all yeah, the questions answered. Yeah, let's just go with it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so is this, well, why don't you start and then I'll interrupt you a few times. Okay. So within this recipe, I have one cup, one cup of butter. And so basically the way this recipe works, like I said earlier, and you can kind of play around with the spices. You can kind of make it more holiday-ish. We decided to make it more of an egg, uh, eggnog cookie, but you can kind of play around with flavor profiles that you want to play with and make it more fun and festive, especially this time of year. So right now we're gonna, we're gonna cream the butter and we're gonna cream the butter and then we're gonna add in um, a half a cup of powdered sugar. So okay. is the butter at room temperature? That seems to always be in every cookie recipe. Yeah, the butter is slightly soft. Um, it is malleable. Um, let me see here. Hopefully, if not, you could just let it go a little longer. Yeah, I mean, it should be, yeah, yeah, it is. So you can smush it a bit. That's yeah, you can smush, yeah, you can smush it a bit. So I'm gonna turn this on and we're gonna let it go. Okay. And is that unsalted butter? This is actually unsalted butter, yeah. That way you can control how much salt's in there. Correct. So what are you looking for when you're creaming butter for cookies? So what you're looking for is softness. You're looking for softness and the color should change slightly. So if you notice, um, I don't know if you can see down in here. Yeah, we can see. Uh, yeah. So you kind of want to increase your speed just a little bit. You want it to be kind of soft and kind of pliable. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of slowly start adding your sugar. What I'm, what I'm using, though, I'm not using regular granulated sugar. I'm using powdered sugar. And the reason for that is so that you have a more softer cookie. Actually. Yeah. I'm gonna add a little bit more butter, sorry. Okay. I'm gonna turn your machine up a bit. So we're gonna add, I think we just add all of this. So. Um, so this recipe will make, will make 20, will make 20, uh, cookies. So we're going to let this kind of, just kind of work and just kind of do a thing. So what and would you recommend gonna, for people who don't have a mixer? A mixer? So I would recommend that you take, that you take your butter out and leave an hour fryer. And as you, as you can see, it's kind of coming together. I'm gonna to add the rest of this powdered sugar here. Um, if you don't have a standing mixer, I do recommend you take your butter out of an hour fire and let it come to room temperature. If you have a hand mixer, that works great. Um, and also in the process, you're gonna see that it's starting to cream, but one thing that you want to do is keep in mind is you want to scrape down your sides. Very important because there might be some some pockets. hiding powder. Exactly. And I'm going to just take this off for a minute just so you guys can see it. As you can see, <clears throat> you kind of want to let it you know, you don't really want to rush this step. You know, the creamy method is a very important method in, a, in any kind of cookie. Um, because that's where you get the softness. 
Um, you also get, um, you know, the structure of the cookie holds up better. So as you can see, see it's still kind of like put together. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna like just put it back in the bowl. It's not fully creamed yet. It's soft, but we're gonna let it go a little bit more now that we scraped down the sides. So, okay. so you added some more butter in there. How much? I did. So I added, so it's a half, of, it's so I would say a half a pound. So it's a half a pound of butter, a half a cup of, of um, powdered sugar. So as you can see, see the color has totally changed. It's kind of gone from a, a pale kind of color. Yeah, it's much more pale. Yeah. And so then you want to add your, this is your flour mix. So I don't know if you guys can see this. You want to add your flour, but which before you add your flour, you want to add your, um, you want to add your nutmeg. You want to add your, nut, your nutmeg and your cinnamon. So I add, um, so I add one teaspoon to the flour mix. Mm -hmm. And you can use, if you have fresh on hand, that's even better. And then I add a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Where do you get your spices, Charles? So we order our spices through a through our uh, through our distributor called Byright, mm -hmm. um, um, and then we actually get you know if this was a fruit cookie or anything like that, we actually order we actually get a lot of our fruit from the market. So we do try to make sure that we get all of our produce that we use for all of our cakes um, for, from the local farmer's market, particularly on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And as you can see that I've added cinnamon and nutmeg to this mix. Now, this is your flour mix. Anybody that knows that whenever you're flour, flour or something, you don't want to automatically add it all the way. You want to kind of slowly, gradually add it at a time because um, you don't want to create a flour bomb. So you just want to kind of slowly, just kind of slowly add it in until it comes together. And like I said, these cookies are very versatile. You can kind of add any other flavor component that you want. You know, you can even add orange zest into this and make it more festive. And as you can see, it's starting to come together. As you can see that, just a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, so what was in your flour mix? So I put, um, I put a tablespoon, I mean a teaspoon of, of nutmeg, mm -hmm. of ground nutmeg, and then I put a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Oh, so the, the cornstarch hasn't been added yet. No, not yet. Uh, okay. No, the corn, yeah, no, no, no. We're gonna add that actually right now, actually. Interesting. Why are they added separately? I, I think um, usually you see recipes actually, with dry and, and wet. Actually, you know, to be honest with you, I forgot to add the corn starch in here. <laughs> so I'm gonna add it now. And that's the thing about baking, it's like, if there's a mistake, if you catch it good enough, you can kind of work with it. And luckily this, this mix actually has no, um, it doesn't have any wet ingredients in it. Mm -hmm. Right, because there's no eggs. Yeah, there's no eggs. Now, as you can see that it's still coming together. And we're gonna turn it on a little higher just to it kind of, Kind of comes to the size of a bowl. 
we all want to, I want to make sure it all fully bonds. And as you can see, it's going to start pulling away from the ball. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's definitely becoming a dough. Is there a danger of over mixing? No, not with this cookie. Mm. With this cookie, it's sort of foolproof, actually. Um, yeah. But with other cookies, that can be a problem? With, with other cookies, yes, that can be a problem. Um, that can be a problem. And you don't really want to over, over mix it too much because um, you want it to make sure that the cookie kind of comes together. All right, so as you can see here, as you can see, the cookie has came together Mm -hmm. And it has a really, really nice holiday-ish um, uh, smell to it. And you can kind of just take your spatula, just kind of scrape it off. And like I said earlier, that you can add stuff to this cookie too, actually, if you want to add zested orange, or if you wanted to add some, um, your favorite choice of, um, pecans or walnuts, you can definitely dress it up. Mm -hmm. But I would definitely say if you're gonna add nuts to it, I would say uh, cut your ratio of flour down. I would say at least by um, tablespoons because your nuts are gonna substitute that. And so what we're gonna do, huh? Were you Sorry, what was, the yeah, what was the ratio? I would say about two tablespoons. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so what we're going to do now. Oh, Charles, you accidentally stopped your video. Oh, there we no, go. Great. Someone, someone was calling me. Oh, okay. I, I get so many calls. All okay, right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move the mixer out of the way. And we're going to can you see me? Yes. Okay. So we have our dough. Um, okay, we're gonna scrape these down and into a nice ball. Just kind of press it. What I do is I press it up against the sides just to make sure there is no extra pockets of flour. And as you can see, it kind of holds together. Okay. And so what you want to do before you start baking them you really want to preheat your oven. Mm -hmm. So home ovens are notoriously fickle. Um, do you have any advice for people in terms of following a recipe or, or maybe trying to figure out what temperature their oven is actually at? Um, I like to do, I would definitely recommend doing it at 350, but you can do 300 degrees if you're not sure about your oven that way you can kind of you can kind of add a little bit of a buffer mm -hmm. you know because some people's ovens um are a little hotter uh or run a little slower and so what you want to do um before you start your cookies you want to add about a half a cup of powdered sugar this is the method that you're going to do for basically you want to roll your cookies in your powdered sugar mix. 
And you can roll, you can do around three or four at a time. And how many tablespoons is that um, scoop? So this will make 20 cookies. And this is a, um, let me see. I think this is a, this is a eight, 18, uh, this is a eight, uh, number 18. So 18th and a eighth, I guess. But I think it's a, I think it's a one, I think it's a one, um, I think it's a one and a half tablespoon from looking at it. But I like to make them smaller, but you can actually choose to make them bigger if you want to do them for like a bigger cookie. But mm. these are great for like, you know, a party or if you're doing like cocktails, you know, and things like that. And did you do anything to the sheet? I did not. Mm. So you could just use a, just your bear, take your sheet. You can choose to put parchment paper on the bottom. I, I did not do that this time. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm just uh, laying them on the sheet tray. So they are, they're they're not going to stick? They're not going to stick. They're not going to stick. But it's best to always use parchment paper if you have it available, or you can use box paper whenever you make any kind of cookie or making an item. And then just kind of take it. And you want to set your cookies about a couple of inches apart. So that way, Charles, you uh, disappeared again, FYI. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay, um, thanks. Yeah, you want to set your cookies a couple inches apart. And um, and that way, when you go to bake them, they bake up properly. These cookies will not spread, so just so you know. So why is it important to keep them you far apart bake if they won't spread? Um, just so you can have proper airflow oh, throughout okay. your pan and for crowdiness, you don't really want cookies to be crowded. Um, that makes sense. So how about if you're making a lot of cookies, um, would you not recommend putting multiple batches in the oven at the same time? Like, should it just you be one tray at a time? I recommend always two trays at a time, you know, and then alternating them. Um, I say alternate them throughout your oven, you know, flipping them 15 minutes uh, from front to back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that way um, the cookies cook evenly. And so that way you have a more of a consistent, a more even cookie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And do you have recommendations for holiday home bakers who are maybe planning to bake a bunch of cookies this weekend for friends? Like oh. how, how do you balance? So I would recommend, I would recommend if you're going to bake a bunch of cookies, use a, I like to call it a one trick recipe. So I would recommend taking like a basic cookie recipe, like a sugar dough recipe, and basically cutting it into three ways and then basically flavoring it. Mm -hmm. And that way you have three different flavors, but you're using one dough. So that way you don't, that way you don't over extend yourself. And then you can add different toppings. You can dip them in chocolate, you know, if you choose to do that. But, um, so now that all the cookies are baked, I mean, are, are, are put in a pan, they're going to go in the oven. I'm going to wash my hands real quick. So these are going to go in the oven throughout 350 for about 
15 to 15 to about 15 to 20 minutes. And so mm -hmm. what we actually already did ahead of time, actually have a tray that is already done. Hold on a second. So um, I always recommend keeping it fun, keeping it creative, and you know, being just just having fun with it. You know, it's never no right or wrong way because it's about the experience that you do with with your with the people, especially with your guests. So we had already we we pre baked these prior, so as you can see. Um, and they're good to go that you could actually just re, if you really want to add more powdered sugar into them, you could just re-dip them into powdered sugar if you want that, that snow. Oh yeah, that I'm surprised to see that they absorbed all that powdered sugar. Yeah. So you can actually just re-dip them. And they'll be fine. Awesome. And then you can have this with tea or coffee or you can add it to your favorite festive cookie box and then also um which we were we're trying to actually roll out actually next week i was we're gonna to ask what are you planning so we're trying to actually come out with our holiday cookie box and we're actually going to make um one of my favorite things that i like to make is uh i like fruit cake a lot of people don't like fruit cake <laughs> um yeah, they think it's the most disgusting thing in the world. But I actually like it. Um, um, so we want to come out with our holiday gift box for Christmas. And then also, while still taking orders for our holiday cheesecakes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Christmas is a, is a time of year that I feel like, you know, time to get together you know hang out because we just had thanksgiving so i think it's more of a relaxing holiday you know for me that's the way i look at it yeah it's lower pressure food wise mm -hmm. and i think i eat a lot more sugar in december just like constant sweets all the time yeah so now that we actually are um They are actually fully coated. You can actually serve these with tea or coffee or, you know, or anything that you choose to. Um, given you've dipped them in powdered sugar twice, are they really sweet? Um, they're not extremely sweet. I mean, but I mean, that's why I like to have it with something. Mm -hmm. so that way it's not it cuts the sweetness but you can also add different elements to this too so you can also add um i like to add um for me i'd like to add a little orange to this and make it more holiday-ish yeah how much orange zest would you recommend adding to this recipe i would say about two tablespoons two tablespoons okay mm -hmm. just That's so you can kind of get mm -hmm. um and someone's asking about the spice mix, the cinnamon and nutmeg. Um, is that to you what makes it an eggnog cookie? Yes, because eggnog is actually just basically nutmeg. So if you add nutmeg to something, we actually have, um, we actually did an olive, we're actually doing this week at the farmer's market. If people want to come out and grab a slice, we're actually doing our eggnog cake. And it is amazing. I'm going to um, turn the camera around. Yeah, Brie mentioned that she got to have a slice. I'm a little jealous. It sounds delicious. Yeah, the eggnog cake is actually, we actually sold a lot of it. Um, it was very popular. <laughs> so what other flavors would you recommend experimenting with for cookies this winter? 
um, for cookies. Yeah. I would definitely recommend, um, I would definitely try to do a pumpkin. So in the kitchen, we did a, we did a pumpkin crinkle, which okay. is actually came out really good. It's, it's soft. It's a soft cookie, but, um, it, once you let it cool, it actually comes out much better. So we do recommend that one. You know, it's all about experimenting and having fun. We were when we did our holiday cookie box for um, for Thanksgiving, we actually made a cookie. Was we make we actually made a hermit cookie, which is basically a flat gingerbread cookie. It's really good. It has raisins. Um, it has raisins, dates, no raisins and caramel uh, crystallized ginger. You grind it up. Then you add molasses, brown sugar, and spices, and then you it, it's like sticky, but you you let it refrigerate it, and then you put it on a sheet tray. You put it like a log, and then when you bake it, it kind of flattens down like a disc. And it's a great it's a it's a when you eat it, it's like a soft cake, but in a cookie at the same time. Mm. Yeah, when and I and it's think really of... good because sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say when. Um, when you, when you eat it, it's kind of like a soft between a cookie and a cake. Yeah. So. I was just thinking about, you know, building your ideal holiday cookie box and, and how you want to have different textures in there for people. And different. yes, I love different textures and different flavors. Um, because that's what I, that's what I, I, that's what I love the most because I feel like you need to have both different elements to really make it work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so one person is asking about other flowers that might make for some interesting cookies, like not just standard all purpose. Oh, you can use cake flour or you can, this recipe actually can be made with gluten-free flour as well. So you can use cake flour, but cake flour will give it a, a more of a cakier, a more of a cakier cookie. And you want this to be coffee between a cookie and a biscuit. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But for other but you don't want it to be like like uh like I really oh, for like other cookies. flour cookies. Oh, I actually we actually did a cookie, we actually did one um for our holiday cookie box for November. We did I did a gluten-free chocolate star cookie. And mm -hmm. that one actually consists of of uh, ground um almonds. And the way that was put together was you grind it up the almonds, you grind it up chocolate, and then you added your flour, then you added your flour mix to the um, to the chocolate and almond mix while the actually while it was still running. Mm. And then it came together like a sticky, like a like a like a soft dough. Mm -hmm. And it was so wet, but you had to let it let it overnight. But other than that, it, it came out really good. So you know it's all about playing around with different flour, and it's okay to mess up. Because even if you, even if it doesn't come out good to you, your guests may still love it. Totally. Everyone is different. So taste. exactly. And you can be like, oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's the flavor I was going for. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've all been there. Just play it you off know. real cool. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it's never, it's always going to be a challenge in the kitchen whenever something comes up. Yeah. So, so someone else is asking about these eggnog cookies. Um, have you ever tried a cocoa and peppermint variation? And, and if so, how would we that work? We did. Mm. We actually do a, we actually did for, uh, for Thanksgiving, we actually did a chocolate and peppermint cookie. And that one was really good. It had a chocolate, it had a chocolate, um, it had a chocolate, um, soft center and it had a frosting on top and we took um basically butter powdered sugar and then we add a little bit of drops of peppermint and a little bit of food coloring mm. to make it more um to make it more red velvet to make it more that had that velvety look and then we took crepe uh crushed uh peppermint candy and then we put it on top as the garnish as, as they cooled but those actually came out really good now with peppermint you don't want to add too much because it can taste like you don't want it to taste too um too soapy or too strong. You know, peppermint or almond or lavender, any of those strong floral 
notes can really overpower a baked good. So I would just say use those sparingly. Yeah, they can be a little dangerous. Mm -hmm. Um, What are your favorite savory flavor combinations for cookies and cakes? I love rosemary. So um, we actually do a rosemary and corn, cornmeal cookie in orange. And it's actually sort of like the way this one is made. But the way you would do it is you would cream your butter, your sugar, and you would substitute half the flour with cornmeal. But the way I do it also, I actually infuse the sugar with rosemary Mm. and orange. So I grind up the rosemary. Whenever you're gonna add any kind of herb or any kind of spice, add it to the sugar because that's where you're gonna get the maximized amount of power from it. And so we add it there and then we add it, we mix it all together and it actually comes out really good. It comes out, I have a lot, a lot of form. The rosemary, surprisingly enough, is not very old. It doesn't overpower the orange. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when you're yeah. infusing a sugar, um, do you remove the rosemary after a while or do you just leave it in there? You just leave it in there. You can do it in the, you do it, you do it in the food processor. Mm. So it all kind of gets, um, it all kind of gets immersed into it. And that yeah. way everything kind of comes together. That's great. Yeah. Rosemary is amazing. Um, yeah, and you can had- always do thyme mm-hmm. or lemon. Mm-hmm. I've had some, 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 uh, some surprisingly good bay leaf desserts around the Bay Area, actually. Bay leaves? Mm-hmm. There I is- do recommend a good book. If anybody wants to know about a good book, the, the books that I use, I recommend, let me grab one for you. Ooh, the secrets to oh, all of Charles' oh, baked goods. This is one of my really good books. It's called The Flavor Bible. It is amazing. So definitely, you guys should definitely go get your copy. Um, I learned a lot from this book. Um, it's definitely, it's not a recipe book, just so you know, it is a flavor book. So if you look up any flavor, so for example, let me look up something. So if I look up, if I look up, um, let me see what this is. So if I see, see it says fennel seeds, it, mm. gives, it has, you probably can't see it. It says, it says sweet, light, uh, quiet, quiet, medium, adds near to the end of cooking to processing. It's great with apples, good to the bank apple seeds. So you can probably see a little yeah. bit of it. It's like a cheat sheet for every ingredient. It's like a cheat sheet, yeah. So that one is really good. Um, I definitely recommend that one. Um, um, yeah. Um, so, so we have a few more questions from folks. Sure. Um, in this eggnog cookie, could you add a bit of walnut flour to it? Yes, you can. You can actually substitute um, walnut flour or um, almond flour. Mm-hmm. As long would as you, you take out, um, I would say, I would say a quarter cup of the regular flour. Okay. Because you don't want to add that in there because you really want to have the flour adds the structure. The walnuts will add the structure too, but they also don't add the bind. They also add. They also don't have the binding flour or the gluten aspect of it like regular flour. Mm-hmm. It will add a very nutty aroma, which is great. Yes. And Mm -hmm. these cookies are a little unusual in that they don't spread at all. But why why is that? Why is that? Yeah. Um, Well, like I said earlier, they're derived from the the actual, the the, the Russian tea cookie Mm -hmm. or the the Mexican wedding cookie. Um, So they're meant to be eaten as a daytime cookie. So you have them in the daytime or as a light snack, you know, or a great elementary sorry, cookie sorry. box. I think the question was more like, what, like, what is it about the way the butter is creamed or the ingredients that makes it oh. stay together? So um, what makes it stay together because there's no, there's no moisture. So mm-hmm. we don't add any egg. There's no egg or vanilla. Um, 
if there was egg in here, the egg would actually separate them and it actually would make them rise. So we don't want them to rise. We just want them to stay together and hold. But in the powdered sugar actually adds sweetness, but it also adds softness and structure to the cookie because powdered sugar actually has cornstarch in it along with the additional cornstarch that we've added. So that, that is basically your egg binder and it basically kind of holds it all together. Mm. So basically that's your mm -hmm. substitute. So it adds, the, the cornstarch does a couple of things. It adds um, sweetness, it adds as a binding element, but it also adds as a structure. And so it helps keeps it soft, keeps the cookie soft and also adds sweetness, structure and why they taste good as well. Okay. So, and so the mm -hmm. first dip in powdered sugar, is that a structural thing? Is that just to make it sweeter? Like, why do you do that and then also do it later? Um, the reason why we dip them, the reason why it's dipped in powdered sugar is because you want it because when it goes in the oven, you want it, you want it to, uh, you want it to, you want it to basically. So it kind of adds, um, kind of like that snowball look. So, and that's why we re-dip them again. So when you're making Russian tea cookies, they, you know, that's one of the the tip, the tips that you can do. Also, I probably did it backwards, but. Um, another thing, if you don't dip them when you bake them, you can actually dip them in the powdered sugar when they come out the oven. So, so it, it actually kind of, it actually absorbs it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So dipping These, them twice is like a traditional thing. Mm -hmm. Because you want to dip them when they come out the oven, let them sit so the, so the powdered sugar kind of absorbs it up. And then once it kind of sets up, you dip them again. Mm -hmm. And that way they stay on the cookie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then thinking a little more generally again about holiday baking and cookies, um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of families like to make sugar cookies so they can roll them out and cut them. Oh, and sugar stamp cookies are very and, fun. And they're fun. Is there any other type of cookie that's good for stamps and cutouts that will hold its shape? Like, is there a way to have a more delicious oh, version yeah. of that experience? <laughs> oh yeah. I definitely, like I was saying, I definitely say taking that, taking that traditional sugar cookie and adding things to it. So adding very spice blend or, you know, some herbs and making it more of, um, you know, making just not your traditional um, sugar cookie. And you can do like a chai spice. You can do, um, like I said earlier, you can do a rosemary and orange. You could, whatever you want to imagine, you can throw it into the sugar cookie. And like I said, you can divide that dough up into three separate bowls and do three different blends. Mm -hmm. That way mm -hmm. you have the same cookie and half the time of work. Yeah, I tested a recipe for the Chronicle that ran this most recent weekend on Neapolitan cookies where you had a sugar cookie and you split it up and one ball you added cocoa powder, one ball you added freeze dried strawberry powder and then Ooh, rolled them good. together. And it was really nice, but I, I hadn't really thought about adding freeze dried fruit to a cookie base before, but it provided a delicious flavor. Now, did it add moisture or did it not? Did it, would it just kind of like, just add the element? No. You could probably grind it up yeah, grind it up. Uh, yeah, you can grind it up. Yeah, in the coffee grinder. Yeah. Um, well, it looks like we don't have any other questions. Um, Charles, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Why don't we tell everyone where they can find your delicious baked goods? So um, you guys can catch us at the farmer's market every Saturday from 8 to 2. Come by my booth. We always have a very festive menu happening this week we have our holiday eggnog cake um we have two more weeks before christmas so i definitely recommend everyone to put in their order um and they can pick it up um they can pick it up at the kitchen at the farmers at the kitchen at the farmer's market or they can actually come you know the day put it in to each part but pick it up i would say christmas eve and no, you're talking about the Ferry Plaza Farmers Market. Are you at other farmers markets these days? We are. So we are actually at um, 
we're actually in Marin on Sundays from nine to two, nine to two, one um, on Sundays, and then we're actually in Walnut Creek on Sundays from eight to eight to one, and then we're actually at Grand Lake uh, Farmers Market from eight to two as well in Oakland. So those are the big things. I can't get across the bay, or they can't come to San Francisco. You can always catch us in Oakland as well. Great. And I know you also offer some delivery too, right? If we do. Stay home. Yeah, we do offer delivery. Or they can actually order through um, DoorDash. They can order through DoorDash, and we can, um, and they can have it for customer pickup, or they can have it go out for for pickup. Awesome. Well, and oh, go ahead. I was gonna say something else. No, please say say more. I was just gonna start oh. saying goodbye to people. <laughs> well, I would say they could also check out our latest article. Um, it was written up in the um, in the Mercury News yesterday. So definitely check out our um, our website, or you can go on my Facebook page, and definitely follow us on Instagram. Yeah, we definitely like our products, and definitely look out for our holiday gift box that we're coming out hopefully next week. And um, hopefully everyone will stay safe and, you know, throughout these rough times. And hopefully I can see everyone next year. Yes. Well, that was a beautiful ending. So I won't add much else, but thank you, <laughs> Charles, so much um, for joining us. And especially with the traffic and the France yes. arrival. And oh. um, it's great that you, you made it. So thank you. And, well, luckily uh, for my team, we kind of got everything together ahead of time. Yes, your baker deserves a raise or something. <laughs> Pat on the back. Yes, um, we're working on that. Yeah, and thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Thanks for mm -hmm. supporting local food. Thanks for supporting local media. Um, we really appreciate it and hope everyone has fun baking and eating sugar this winter. Yes, and thank you guys. Definitely follow us on our social media platforms and Thank you guys for participating. Sorry about the late um, entourage, the late mm -hmm. rush. <laughs> and, um, you know, hopefully everyone had fun and asked a lot of questions. And I'm hoping again to do it again next year. Hopefully we can do it live. In, <laughs> in person. That'd be nice. Um, all right. Sounds good. Bye. Bye. Bye.